Hello everyone, I would like to introduce myself. My name is Brian, and I am the newest member of the High Stakes team. Now I'd like to commence this video with a request for those interested in receiving more premium betting tips and predictions. If our guidance has contributed to your success in winning bets and generating revenue, we kindly seek your support in revitalizing this channel. Your assistance plays a crucial role in bolstering our presence on YouTube. You're welcome to explore our Patreon support tier or check out our various plans. Multiple plans are available for each and every one of you seeking our premium picks. Texas Rangers vs Baltimore Orioles my team pick is Baltimore Moneyline, and here is why. Given Scherzer's age and lack of innings this season, it is hard to gauge what to expect from him. Suarez has tossed his best at home this season, and he will have a helpful boost from the hot June bats of the Orioles. Texas has remained inconsistent at the plate, and that average has only dropped over the course of June. Look for Baltimore to lean on their recent strength and get the win here. My total pick is under 8.5 runs, and here is why. Baltimore lit up the scoreboard in Game 1, but it is hard to expect both clubs to combine for nearly 30 total hits in Game 2. Texas remains inconsistent at the plate, and Scherzer has been a good out over his career. Both the Rangers and the Orioles are hitting fewer than half of their home runs and doubles in their respective home away splits, and with Suarez boasting a sub-2 point, double zero home era, we should expect the Rangers to remain sluggish early. Washington Nationals vs Tampa Bay Rays, my team pick is Rays to win, and here is why. In their last series the Rays were at home, and after winning the first two games against the Seattle Mariners they could not complete the sweep losing 5-2 in the finale. In the loss, Seattle scored two runs on five hits with Yandy Diaz and Richie Palacios each with an RBI. On the season Tampa Bay ranks 22nd in the majors in runs scored and 23rd in team era. Isaac Perry's .27212 HR41 RBI leads the club in HR and RBI, and only has one hit over the last five games in a two-run HR. Diaz .2757 HR40 RBI leads the team in batting average, ranks second in RBI, and is riding a 19-game hitting streak. On the season the Rays are 21-24 at home. Zach Eflin 3-5 4.20 era 1.14 whip goes for Tampa Bay in the opener of this series and gave up four runs on five hits in seven innings in his last outing in a 4-3 loss to the Pittsburgh Pirates. The Rays had won his previous six starts and he has given up four runs in each of his last two starts while giving up two runs in the two outings before that. The Rays had won three in a row before losing their last game and the Nats come into this interleague opener losers of three in a row. The Washington pitching has not been good lately giving up a total of 24 runs in their three-game slide. The Rays do not have a potent lineup but they will get some runs in this game facing Parker, who has given up four runs in two of his last three starts. Eflin has given up four runs in each of his last two starts and will give up around that many in this game. Tampa will get more clutch hitting and at home they will take this game and send the Nats to their fourth loss in a row. My total pick is over 7.5 runs and here is why. The total is set low for this series opener at 7.5 runs, even though both starters gave up four runs in their last starts. The Nats have lost three in a row where they gave up a total of 24 runs. Parker has been up and down in his last few starts and has given up four runs in two of the last three. He will not get blasted but will give up some runs. Eflin will also give up some runs and he has given up four in each of his last two outings. This game one will not be a barn burner but it will also be far from a pitcher's duel so the over is the pick in this one. Miami Marlins vs Philadelphia Phillies. My team pick is Miami Marlins to win, and here is why. With a runner on third, Marlins second baseman Otto Lopez hit a hard grounder towards shortstop Edmund Sosa, who was playing in with the Phillies trailing by one. The ball went right under Sosa's glove, and Schwarber charged, barehanding it and throwing off balance to second base in an attempt to get Lopez. Leading 3-0 through six innings, Zach Wheeler looked to be on his way to another scoreless gym before a tough break spoiled his night. With two outs and a runner on in the seventh, Wheeler threw in 0-2 pitch to Ali Sanchez that appeared to catch the corner but was called a ball. Sanchez ultimately singled on the 10th pitch of the at-bat, ending Wheeler's night. Reliever Matt Strom allowed both inherited runners and two of his own to score as the Phillies 3-0 lead turned into a 4-3 deficit. Though Philadelphia tied it up in the bottom of the seventh, things unraveled in the eighth and ninth. The game itself saw pivotal moments that propelled the Marlins to victory. Jake Berger hit a go-ahead solo homer in the eighth inning off reliever Jeff Hoffman, breaking a four-all tie. It always feels good to do that, Berger said. It's frustrating with how the last few weeks have gone for me and not contributing more, 
so to hit a go-ahead home run and drive in an insurance run there in the ninth, his great burger later added an RBI single in the ninth to extend Miami's lead. Earlier, Brian De La Cruz tied the game at three with a three-run double in the seventh, followed by Josh Bell's RBI double, marking the 200th double of his career and giving the Marlins a 4-3 lead. Despite the Phillies' bullpen's strong track record, the Marlins' lineup delivered crucial hits to secure the win. It didn't look great for half of the game, but we had a really good seventh-inning Marlins manager Skip Shoemaker said. Big hits from De La Cruz and Josh Bell. It was just one of those hard-fought games. Their bullpen is really good. We needed good at-bats throughout the lineup. That's how you score seven runs. Despite their overall struggles, the Marlins are 3-1 against the Phillies this season. Philly will be dealing with significant injuries to key players like Bryce Harper and Kyle Schwarber. Without their star power, the Phillies' lineup is weakened, making it harder for them to generate offense. While Christopher Sanchez has been excellent, Miami's Kyle Tyler is an unpredictable factor and has the advantage of the lessened lineup. If you're looking for a value play, the Marlins present the opportunity at 217. The Marlins win over the Phillies last night, where they came back late in the game, can serve as a momentum booster. Confidence is such a massive thing in an everyday sport, and the Marlins should have a bucket load as they performed well against quality relief pitching like Matt Strom and Jeff Hoffman. Take the Marlins again tonight. My total pick is under 8.5 runs, and here is why. Philadelphia's Christopher Sanchez LHP 5-3, 2.67 era, 70 so has been outstanding this season, ranking among the league's best. Miami's Kyle Tyler RHP 00, 4.50, 4.50 era, 3 so has limited experience but has shown potential to keep the game tight. The Phillies are missing key hitters like Bryce Harper and Kyle Schwarber due to recent injuries. These absences significantly reduce their offensive firepower, making it less likely they'll rack up runs. If you like trends, the Phillies have an over-under record of 35415 this season. At home, the Phillies have an over-under record of 19-223, again suggesting a propensity for lower scoring games. The Marlins have an over-under record of 13-25 on the road, demonstrating their struggles to score and generally keeping games under the total. Also, Miami ranks near the bottom in many offensive categories, and despite a few standout performances, they have consistently struggled to score runs, especially on the road. My total pick is under 8.5 runs, and here is why. Philadelphia's Christopher Sanchez LHP 5-3, 2.67 era, 70 so has been outstanding this season, ranking among the league's best. Miami's Kyle Tyler RHP 00, 4.50, 4.50 era, 3 so has limited experience but has shown potential to keep the game tight. The Phillies are missing key hitters like Bryce Harper and Kyle Schwarber due to recent injuries. These absences significantly reduce their offensive firepower, making it less likely they'll rack up runs. If you like trends, the Phillies have an over-under record of 35415 this season. At home, the Phillies have an over-under record of 19-223, again suggesting a propensity for lower scoring games. The Marlins have an over-under record of 13-25 on the road, demonstrating their struggles to score and generally keeping games under the total. Also, Miami ranks near the bottom in many offensive categories, and despite a few standout performances, they have consistently struggled to score runs, especially on the road. New York Yankees vs Toronto Blue Jays, my team pick is New York Yankees to win, and here is why. The New York Yankees have been struggling as of late as they lost on Wednesday against the New York Mets 1-2-2. The lineup went just 6 for 31 with 7 walks and 8 strikeouts. The Yankees had Aaron Judge hit a homer in the game as well. The team went hitless in seven at-bats and had nine runners left on base. Luis Gill struggled as he pitched 4.1 innings and gave up five runs, so the team needs to figure out how to get back in the win column. Right-hander Marcus Stroman is going to be taking the ball for the New York Yankees and is doing well as he is 7-3 with a 3.15 era and a 1.26 whip in 91.1 innings of work. Hitters have been able to hit homers off him as Stroman has allowed 12 home runs up to this point of the year after allowing only nine last season. Stroman is coming off a winning effort against the Atlanta Braves, where he pitched 6.2 innings and gave up three runs on three hits with a pair of walks and six strikeouts. The New York Yankees may be struggling, but they are the better team overall in this game. Marcus Stroman is going up against his former team and should dominate as on the road this season. He is 5-1 with a 2.18 era and a point, double 26 batting average against 45.1 innings, eight starts. UC Kikuchi is 2-5 with a 3.99 era 
and a 1.12 whip in 36.0 innings 8 starts these offenses have been on two completely different levels offensively this season as the Yankees are third in the sport with a .759 team ops while scoring 4.98 runs per game, while the Blue Jays are 21st with a .679 team ops while averaging 3.94 runs per game so far. All in all, go with the New York Yankees to pick up a win in this game. My total pick is over eight runs, and here is why. When looking at these starting pitchers in June, they have been giving up too many runs as Marcus Stroman is 2-1 with a 4.91 era and a 1.41 whip in 22.0 innings four starts, while UC Kikuchi is 2-3 with a 6.04 era and a .337 batting average against in 22.1 innings five starts. In the last seven days, these teams are not pitching well as New York is 29th with a 6.91 team error while Toronto is 24th with a 5.49 team error thus far. Go with over eight runs in this game as the better option.